Before we move on, be sure to subscribe and with notifications on so you don't miss any of our videos. In the very heart of Europe, there's a wild oasis, a wetland forest of pristine beauty. But this tranquil scene is just a breathing break in the life of the Danube. Already, massive clouds are darkening the sky, foreshadowing the moment when their discharge will be added to the flow of the river. Then, the quiet days are over. The everlasting cycle of water is once again set in motion. Remnants of previous floods, megatons of driftwood, rise from the mud. Once the main river spills beyond its banks, everything begins to move. On the water, in the water, underwater. Even on the water's edge. The flood is a primeval force. Nothing will stop it. You escape or you die. The river's power is at work, wherever power stations have not stolen it. It's a power that will destroy and recreate again and again and again. The Danube's floodplains are an extremely dynamic habitat, perpetually changing, like any natural riverscape. Across most of Central Europe, however, natural riverscapes are history. As long as this last wild remnant of Austria's wetlands remains untamed, it will harbor ever-changing secrets. The secrets of the flooded forest. In the wetland forest, the waters are always flowing. Sluggish, just seeping along for most of the time, they give no hint of the sudden violence they're capable of. The current pulls along logs, piles them up, and whenever it finds a new channel, sets them aground. For a while, at least. Since 1996, the wetland forest downstream from Vienna has been a national park, the prize of a tough struggle of many Austrians against the construction of a power station. This precious patch of wilderness touches Vienna's suburban gardens. It makes Vienna a member of an exclusive club of big cities who can boast protected wilderness areas within their metropolitan borders. In the urban area, the Danube is diked and dammed up like almost anywhere along its course through Austria. But right on the opposite bank is the wild side, with wetland forests, oxbows and ever-shifting sandbanks and channels, bogs and islands. Changing water levels have shaped this landscape and are constantly reshaping it.
The protected area along the Danube covers 10,000 hectares. Almost one third of that is metropolitan land. Vienna suburbs in spring, idyllic, and not as quiet as it seems. There's more life out here than in the city. The forest is crawling with thousands of amphibians. Out in the cultivated fields, there's no place for them. Toads and northern frogs. For a few days, they congregate en masse to mate in the Danube's backwaters. Few males will find a partner of their own. Females are in the minority. That goes for toads as well as frogs. Toads are quite different from frogs. They have warts on their skins and vertical pupils. But love makes blind, especially when you have to be quick to grab a partner. A young otter hunting alone for the first time. Adult otters will avoid toads, they just hunt frogs, but you have to know the difference. The acid secretion on the toad's skin is not meant to be an appetizer. But the otter needs another lesson. He has finally grasped it. Frogs simply taste better. No other wetland inhabitant had been eradicated from Central Europe as radically as the European palm turtle. Once every wetland forest was full of them. But where do you find wetland forests these days? Central Europe's only member of the turtle family need quiet bodies of water with lush vegetation. These are its hunting grounds. Nearby, they need dry, hot areas like old sandbanks where they can bury their eggs. This is a rare combination, even around here. Now in spring, the water is still cold, so the turtles spend hours sunbathing on driftwood. A shallow oxbow with banks protected by dense undergrowth is an ideal nesting site for little grebes and coots. Soon the reeds will be high, then the floating nest will be practically invisible. The grebes try to keep a low profile in contrast to their loud neighbours, the coots. In the commotion of a battle at sea, sinking your own partner is a real risk. More than 100 bird species crowd into Austria's last big wetland forest to breed. Trees in the bogs grow fast and high. 
Black poplars, a rare species elsewhere, stand up to 35 meters tall. They grow in the company of white poplars and white willows. The soft wood of such fallen giants rots away in just a few years. In each stage of their growth and decomposition, these impressive trees provide food and shelter to myriads of organisms. Many animals and plants could not even exist without deadwood, such as mosses, lichen, fungi, certain insects, or the black woodpecker. Deadwood. What an inappropriate term. This mouldy three-dimensional world contains more life than a living tree.